Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I want to show you a really cool project that's going on, which is running stable diffusion on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. So let's check it out. Now this software that I'm about to show you is very impressive. Now it's created by a guy named Vito and the software is called Onyx Stream. And I'll leave a link down in the description below. The purpose of this software allows you to run stable diffusion, which is AI generative art. Same reason why I bought this large 24 gigabyte graphic card for on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 with only 512 megabytes of RAM. This type of software is like a huge gateway for a lot of these AI programs to run on lower RAM devices. Now there's more details about it on his GitHub, but basically it streams the data into your CPU to process and create the generative art or the AI software. Now I did hear about this on my Twitter a couple of days ago from someone who actually posted about it. And yeah, I've been playing around with it and it's really, really cool. To think like a month ago, I was just struggling to run because I didn't have enough video RAM. And now we could run it on Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'm gonna jump over to the desktop to show you guys the project itself. This is the GitHub, uh, Vito Plantumora. I apologize if I butcher your name, but you got something going on really good here. As you can see, there's only two commits here and the latest commit was from last week. This, this project is very, very fresh. This gives you a basic description of what it does. So if you wanna read about this, it's pretty cool. Uh, how he uses the streaming or decoupling interface. Cool stuff over here. And it shows you a couple of examples that he did where he was using the Raspberry Pi Zero and with different um, decoders. And you could see like they almost look exactly the same. The main thing about this is that it needs to use XNN pack and then his software on top of that. He also gives you the performance stats on each one, depending on how much RAM you need to use or how fast it is. Now, I actually ran three different um, images through this and I'll show you the times on those as well in a second. Over here, he explains going into detail of how everything works, uh, even with his software. And then here is the interesting bit with uh, building the stable diffusion on your, I actually built it right off the Raspberry Pi, so you can build this on the Raspberry Pi. Now I did run into slight, slight issue. I think it's more user error than it is his error because he was able to compile it perfectly fine, but I did run into slight issue where it would have trouble compiling. And um, I'll show you that in a second as well. Here are the compiling instructions and basically it tells you to get the XNN pack and it'll give you a git checkout number before this specific date because it knows to work with his software. And then on the bottom, he has his software. Also, he has the options on what you could use the software with. And if you are gonna be using this with Raspberry Pi, you need to put this in there, which is the RPI option. Otherwise, you can use this on other machines that are low RAM or just for testing purposes, you could use this anywhere. Now, he does have the basic option. So you're not getting the full stable diffusion web GUI front end, but you are gonna be able to generate what he needs. Now, if you scroll up to the top, he also has the weights here. So I've been using his weights instead. I don't know how to add the other weights or create the other weights, but in his um, document here, he does have all the weights in here. It's actually, uh, if you go over to release, and that's where the weight is, it's about 1.9 gig. Now, I actually created a little issue board over here. You could follow along if you want. Um, I was explaining how I was having a little bit of issues. And then if you scroll down just a hair, I also show the results of everything happening and it works, uh, the steps that I took to do. And then later on, I actually gave you the hash number for the Raspberry Pi OS that I'm using, as well as the checkout number that I'm using for the XNN pack. So if you are having trouble compiling this, I do have all the information on his GitHub as well in the issue boards. Otherwise, here are a couple of examples that I have going on. So the first one I created was using three steps. And imagine, same thing with stable diffusion on how I talked about it from before. It uses noise and then it starts drawing on the noise to get closer to the prompt that you want. And then the more steps you have, the more it modifies the noise to the picture. So to start off, I used three steps with the prompt uh, astronaut on a horse. And each step took about 26 minutes, which is really long compared to my PC, but having it generate through a Raspberry Pi with only 512 megabytes of RAM is still impressive to me. So yeah, I let that run. It's about 26 minutes per step. And here's the image of that. Now you can see it's, it doesn't really appear to anything. <laughs> it actually doesn't even show any astronaut or anything. It's just it's this big blob. That's the problem with three steps. It's just too little for it to even finish the image out. So. What I ended up doing is regenerating the same image using the same prompt, same everything, but instead of three steps, I use seven steps and here's the difference. 
and as you can see you actually start seeing uh, astronaut on a horse on the moon or on some space uh, planet and it looks so much better in seven steps now this did take about three hours compared to the hour and a half with the three steps now I took this a little bit further and I let it run kind of overnight you could say and I ran it again in 15 steps and here's the results for that now you do see the astronaut itself but the horse is missing it is still on a red planet um, th this is where the cause and effect of when you have too much steps in a program it might deter from what the actual prompt is and this happens all the time depending on the image that you're trying to generate but the most impressive part is it works now this software is still in its infancy uh, i'm pretty sure there are ways to probably improve the performance but for now like i said earlier it's only been about two weeks since this project's been out and uh, my mind is blown how it's able to run on a raspberry pi zero which means i should be able to run this on a raspberry pi 4 or some other low-end device that has low ram getting stable diffusion to work on a low RAM device is just a start because you could start doing other stuff with AI with this type of technology, which is the Onyx stream. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I really thought this project was extremely interesting. And if you guys are playing with the project yourself, um, check out the issue boards, check out this project. Uh, I, I don't know too, too much about it on how to add models or weights yet, but I just thought it was very impressive. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.